got to eat dinner before we get to the theater if we're going to eat tonight. Well, well oh, you look yeah, nice. You look gorgeous. Except for one thing, your tie is crooked. Well, Come here. Stand still. No, oh, good goodness. Grief. <laughs> well, thank you very much. There you me. are, handsome. Yeah. Me, handsome? Well, I think you are. I think you're beautiful. What? Yeah, and if I were locked in a castle, you could be the handsome prince on a white horse who saves me by killing the dragon. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, just a moment. What's all this buttering up? I gave you your allowances this week. What is this? Do we have to have a reason to pay our father a compliment? Gee whiz. Oh, sorry, son. Huh? Thank you. Oh, by the way... <laughs> yeah. I left my report card on the desk in my room. Would you sign it without looking at it, handsome? <laughs> I just love you. You just love me? Yeah, because you're handsome and smart. I'm smart. I bet you know how to get bubble gum out of an electric shaver, don't you, Daddy? <laughs> Honey, how do you like my dress? Oh, it's beautiful. Mm. It's a poem. It's a symphony. Oh. The man who designed that dress had only you in mind when he made it. I'll go change it. Come on! <laughs> We're late now. We're never going to get any food. Oh, I, wait, wait, honey. I've got to call up Louise. Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh, yeah, now, tonight, first, we're going to be at the colony for dinner. Then will you Jeff hurry here, up, And then Jeff. starting. Oh, honey, I better write those numbers down. Don't so you write anything down, down, will you? Please, up? look. I already blew the appetizer. I don't want to lose the soup, too. Now, come on. Let's go. Have a wonderful time. Oh, thank you. So long. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, we weren't expecting you. Well, if you wasn't expecting me, how come you all dressed up? <laughs> we, we had some uh, tickets for the theater tonight. Yeah, yeah. Gee, this is embarrassing. <laughs> well, don't let me spoil your fun. Children, go out, laugh, dance, sing, be happy. Well, you sure will be all right. Because I'm going to be here when you get back. Well, those tickets cost an arm and a leg. Sure, life. why should you change your plans? Uh -huh. Just because I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> All right, you big ham. Now, we'd like to stay and listen to your tale of woe, but like I said, those tickets cost a lot of money, and we've got to go. Yeah, what I got to say, I can say in one second. Good. What is it? Well, it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes our dinner. All right, Unc, let's have it. Yeah, well, while I wait, maybe you gave me some little thing to nibble on to keep up my strength, huh? Well, I didn't make any dinner tonight. The kids and I just ate leftovers. Oh, that's all right, Levine. Just fix me some little simple Lebanese snack, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Something like roast lamb with stuffed grape leaves, a barbecued chicken with wild rice and pig nut. Yeah, exactly. I'll open up a can of sardines. <laughs> Uh, that's what you call Lebanese snack. Couldn't you at least make me a little lamb, Mishwe? Huh? A, a shish kebab to you. Oh, shish kebab. Sure, I run a knit needle through the sardines. <laughs> All right, Uncle, what's the trouble? Now, the trouble is I left Toledo forever. What are you talking about? How could you leave your family and relatives forever? What's the matter? Uncle Denise, what happened? Well, uh, you will hear, but you won't believe. What? They threw me out of the family cemetery. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you know, a couple months ago, how the whole family get together and they chip in and they buy a nice little piece of real estate. The family bought a piece of real estate? Yeah, a piece of an old subdivided golf course. Yeah, but beautiful golf course, but beautiful. And so we make your family cemetery, you see? And we cut it up into plots so there'd be plenty of room for everybody should be nice and comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but the best plot in the whole place is a little clearing on the top of a hill. There is growing a beautiful blum tree. And this place on top of the hill with the blum tree is reserved for the relative who has done the most good for the whole family. The leader of the community in Toledo. Ain't it I supposed to have it? <laughs> of course you are. Well, I don't got it. <laughs> they give to Cousin Adib, she'll be up on the hill. Me? They put down in the sand trap. <laughs> You were supposed to be the head of the whole Lebanese community. Yeah. Why would they bypass you? Who made this decision? Uh, Habib says it's got to be everything fair. 
So we're going to leave it up to a three-man's committee, they decide. Well, that sounds reasonable. Yeah, yeah well, who, who was on the committee? Habib's brother-in-law, Habib's brother, and Habib. <laughs> oh, no, I saw you were framed, and it's a pity. But that's no excuse for you to tear up your roots, it's ruin your whole life, and what's so important about the top of the hill? Oh, Diane, you don't understand about the top of the hill. That's the best, the nicest, the most peaceful place in all cemetery, but top of that hill with the plum tree. You know, in the winter, it's covered with, with clean white snow. And in the summer, you could reach up and pick a plum from that tree. <laughs> Aside from skiing and picking plums, <laughs> what's so important about this hill? You don't understand what's important. It's the honor to be there. The top of the hill by the plum tree is meant for the leader of the community. They put Habib there. That means the whole family think that Habib is the most important. And that's why I never go back to Lido. They don't appreciate me. <laughs> Uncle Canoes, all this talk is ridiculous. Talking about burial plots. Why, you're a young, vigorous, healthy man. And, and you should stop worrying about cemeteries. Yeah, things. it's morbid. Oh, it gives me the chills. I don't like talking about death. It frightens me. Death frighten you? Why, yeah. that's beautiful. You never read the words of the poet Gibran in his book, The Prophet? What is it to die but to stand naked in the wind and melt into the sun? What is it to cease breathing but to free the breath from its restless tides that it may rise and expand and see God unencumbered? Only when you drink from the river of silence, then can you truly sing only when you reach the mountain top, then you shall begin to climb. And only when the earth claim your limbs, then shall you indeed dance. Oh, that's beautiful, Uncle Tanu. Yeah, that's beautiful. And Habib is gonna dance under the plum tree, and I'm gonna dance in the sand. <laughs> You, you go out to have a good time, sing, dance, be happy. I go upstairs, I am back, I get the good night's rest. Oh, Uncle Tanus, I hate to tell you, but we just haven't got any room for you here. You don't have any room for beloved old uncle? Almost before I was sleeping in the bed in Rusty's room. Well, you see, I had to move Rusty in with Linda because Louise is having her apartment painted and she's staying in Rusty's room. You throw me out of the bed in Rusty's room. Habib, throw me out of the place in the cemetery. <laughs> I don't got no place to lie down. <laughs> well, it's your own fault. Why don't you write and let us know you're coming? Why well, should write and let you write? You want a warning so you can lock up the good silver? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I feel terrible. Never well, mind feeling terrible. I go bed. find a place. Where are you going? Sleep. I go to the bar. To the bar? To the bar. No, yes, that's I go ridiculous. Or maybe I should write them a letter first oh. and let them prepare a bench for me. <laughs> No, no, no. Please sit down. Honey, couldn't he spend the night on the sofa? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, after dinner, I'll, I'll, I'll get Louise to get a pillow and blanket for you, and uh, I think you'll be comfortable there, won't you, Uncle Tanous? Right? Oh, sure, it'd be all right. You know, when I was a little boy in the old country in Lebanon, I used to be a shepherd in the mountains. Many nights, I'd sleep on the rocks. And this bed be about as good. <laughs> Him up. Is that you, my sweetheart? <laughs> oh, Uncle Denise, did we wake you up? No, 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 I couldn't sleep. <laughs> What's the matter? I've been thinking, and I've been saying to myself, Denise, you are foolish to run. No man can run away from his relatives. Good for you, and you decided to go back to Toledo. No, I decided to move in with you here. <laughs> No, no, not permanently. Oh. <laughs> Only for a few years. <laughs> no, no, Danny, we... Uh, look, uh, 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 why couldn't we talk about it in the morning? It's getting so late. Oh, sure, we got all the time in the world to talk about it. Oh. I'm going to be living with you, you lucky people. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> well, good night, Uncle Denise. Uh, I hope you'll be comfortable there yeah. on the sofa. Don't worry about me. Yeah. Good night, children. Good night. 
something wrong? Huh? Oh, no, Don. Yeah, that's something that... I've been sleeping in good beds so long, I guess I'm a little bit spoiled. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Well, good night. Good night, sure. Ah! <laughs> Uncle, are you in pain? Oh, you heard that? <laughs> I meant to scream on the inside. <laughs> good night, children. Good night. We just can't uh, let Uncle Tanu uh, sleep on the sofa. I know. Come on, Uncle. Get up. What? Get up, uh, sleep in our bed. No, oh, no, I wouldn't do that for okay. anything in the world. Yeah. It's all right. no, on, I'm no, gonna no, go to the, be, the man and Wait, wife, I'm gonna all. take their bed. No, no don't worry about it. No, that's never a good Please, I'll sleep in a club chair and Kathy will sleep in a sofa. Everything will be fine. You go ahead. Daniel, <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, you gonna give up your own bedroom to your own uncle? Oh, I never think anybody. This I didn't expect. You made an old man very happy. <laughs> Good night, children. Oh, Uncle Tanoot, I, I better go get our pajamas first. Oh, no, here, I put them under the bill. <laughs> from Toledo. <laughs> Where did Uncle Toulouse get the nerve to think that he could redecorate our apartment? From the same place he had the gall to hang that picture over there. <laughs> what is that? That? <laughs> that is a picture of your Uncle Toulouse as a baby. <laughs> Done by an artist who'd do anything for a book. <laughs> Uncle Tanus has been here for three days And he has taken over the entire place He has established a beachhead in my kitchen I got six burners in there Six burners All of them going full blast And every one of them's got something with rice in it I'm scared to go in that kitchen I'm Scared I'll get snow blind <laughs> I'm gonna get her this off the wall right now Kathy, what are you doing with my picture? I hung it on the wall. Yes, and I took it down. Oh, I know you're crazy about me, but you don't have to carry picture with you all day long. <laughs> hang it on the wall where everybody can enjoy. I tell you what, I get you wallet-sized picture you can carry. <laughs> I'm gonna quit school. What is the matter with you? I failed my American history test. You failed your American history test. Why, that's your best subject. How could you fail it? I helped you myself. <laughs> I know, but my teacher says America was not discovered by a Lebanese sailor. <laughs> Uncle Tanoush, you told her that Christopher Columbus was a Lebanese? Sure, what do you think it was, Eskimo? <laughs> you do a thing like that? Oh, well, he was born in the same little village in Lebanon with George Washington. <laughs> I got that wrong, too. <laughs> Mom, can I have a piece of steak, please? You certainly may not. You'll eat rice along with the rest of us. <laughs> I don't want it for my stomach. I want it for my eye. Oh, your eye? Rusty, let me... Oh, Rusty, where did you get that terrible black eye? From Jimmy Sullivan. Did that big bully pick on you? No, I challenged him to a fight. You challenged Jimmy Sullivan to a fight? Oh, Rusty, where are your brains? He's twice your size. I know, but a certain person around here hypnotized me with a lot of stories about how our noble ancestors fought lions barehanded. <laughs> how anyone in this family could lick anyone else with one hand tied behind his back. Ha! <laughs> Well, he didn't listen very good. What I was said was that the other fellow should have his hand tied behind him. Just 
exploded in the kitchen. Exploded! <laughs> Don't blame yourself, Louise. I'll be a month scraping that stuff off the ceiling there. But it's not your fault. You just don't got the talent for cooking rice. <laughs> I tell you what, from now on, I'm gonna do the cooking. No, you don't! <laughs> oh, don't try to thank me. Get out of my kitchen! How dare you go in there? I can't take it. Miss Williams, I just can't take it. I got to quit this job because I can't take oh. it. That old man's going to run me raving crazy. Oh, Louise, you don't think this is any kind of a big thing. Louise, you know, black boy. He gives me the He ain't no kid of mine. He ain't no kid of mine. I'm behind my back and everything. Quiet, please. I can't hear myself think. Well, how's my happy little family today? Canoes did something wrong? Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, he he told me that. Yeah, he told me that. 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 He told Go ahead, honey. You talk the loudest. You tell me. <laughs> we may all love Uncle Tanoose, but it is just impossible to live with him. Oh. Look, he got Rusty to, to fight and get a black eye. He's trying to educate Linda all wrong. And if I... What do you mean I'm the loudest talker? Oh. <laughs> Danny, you have got to listen to me. We can't stand it. You've got to get him out of this house. What are you talking about? I'm not going to make Uncle leave this house. You can't mean that. I mean that you've got to get rid of him. You want me... How can I get rid of my Uncle Tanus? Call the exterminator. No, wait, wait. <laughs> Shame on you. <coughs> All right, so you got a little rice on you. <laughs> and you, that's the first black guy you ever got in your life? All of you ashamed of yourselves. You can't have a little compassion for this man who's come to us for refuge. This man has been rejected by the people in his community for whom he has worked and cared all of his life. Now you want me, his closest living relative, to reject him too? Oh, come on. Have a little compassion. Try to understand this old man whose only crime is that he loves us and wants to help us. Daniel, they, yeah. where are I gonna put these sticks? My golf clubs, why, why, why don't you leave them in the bag, Uncle Tanu? Oh, I can't do that. Why not? Where do you think I put the rice? <laughs> <laughs> not my beautiful leather bag? <coughs> my brand new leather bag full of soggy rice? <laughs> Louise, call the exterminator! <laughs> now maybe you realize what we've oh, been going through. I'll handle this. Here. Just go to your rooms, all of you. I'll handle this. Let me handle it my way. Well... I'm at the I want to talk to you. <laughs> what do you want to say, Danielle? Yes. Sit down. Sit down, Unc. Sure. Look. Huh. I'll tell the truth. You'd be a lot happier in Toledo, wouldn't you? Toledo? I wouldn't go back to Toledo if they make me the mayor. Why? They ask you to make me offer? <laughs> no, no, I mean, they didn't, but... You and I know that you'd be a lot better off in, in Toledo than here in New York, so why don't you go on back home and, and forget this whole cemetery business? Forget the whole cemetery business? When they give the place of honor to Habib up on top of the hill where he can pick the plums? <laughs> and if I am on the bottom, all I'm gonna get is the bits? <laughs> You're just being childish. Huh. For goodness sake, there must be another spot in that ridiculous place where you could lie comfortable. Huh. Why don't you lie down next to Uncle Butrus? He was but, a nice man. Butrus? Absolutely not. Why not? He snored. Oh. <laughs> Are you just being childish? Why didn't you talk to Habib? Maybe you could have come up with a little compromise. Maybe tossed a coin for the spot on the top of the hill. Why don't you talk to him on the phone now? I, I wouldn't look his wife in the face. You wouldn't. After what he done to me, never. Never. Well, I'm going to call you. Him. Don't... Oh, Myrtle, well, get me, Toledo, I, Ohio. If it hurts him in the tooth like it hurts me in the heart, then I'm going to talk to him. You can hang up, Daniel, because I wouldn't talk. 975-9595, please. Yes. Basically, I'll talk to long distance. Just being ridiculous, that's all. Hello? Hello? 
Hello, Cousin Habib. Danny in New York. I'm fine, sir. How are you? All well. Oh, he's been here with us. Yes, he's fine. He's worried about you. What? You are. He says he's sorry that this thing came up to separate two old friends. I'll tell him. Cousin Habib says he's ashamed of himself for not calling you and talking it over when the problem came up. Tell him that I'm a little bit ashamed, too. Cousin Habib, Tanu says he's ashamed, too. I should never run away from Toledo. He said he should have never left Toledo. After all, we are old enough, both of us. If we got a little problem, we should sit down and talk over man to man, huh? Uh, Habib, after all, you and me, we are the most important members of the family. And who's to say the, who is going to get that one place on the hill with the plum tree in the cemetery, you or me? <laughs> and if there's only room for one on the hill by the plum tree, then it belongs to me and you should eat me like that. We're going to show you pictures of the gods and tell them to watch out for you. Don't talk like that. You head of a family, you couldn't be head of a moose. I'm ashamed to be even a member of your family. I'm going to change my name. Call me Loretta Young. No! Habib, this is Danny again. Now, look, you're a very intelligent man, and I want to put it straight up to you. Now, this whole quarrel began over who should have the spot of honor on top of the hill. Now, believe me, Cousin Habib, a man doesn't have to seek honors. If he's lived a good life, honors will seek him. Think for a moment. When you hear the music of the immortal Mozart, do you think whether he's buried on top of a hill or the bottom of the hill? Certainly not. You think only of his beautiful music. Well, the truth of the matter is, this great man is buried in an unknown spot. No one knows where he's buried. Now, you and Tanus have been so busy chasing honor and glory, you've forgotten the greatest virtue of them all, humility. Yes. Believe me, if you chose a, an inconspicuous spot on the bottom of the hill, in the sand trap. For the next thousand years, your descendants would point with pride and say, there lies our great ancestor Habib. He must have been the greatest of them all because he was a humble man. He did so much in his lifetime and asked for so little reward. Thank you. I knew you'd see it that way. Goodbye. <laughs> there you are. You have your wish, Uncle Tanus. Top of the hill is yours. <laughs> you got a big mouth. <laughs> Who asked you to butt in? They're going to put me on top of the hill, but everybody's going to pay honor to Habib, who's on the bottom. Get me back in the sand trap. Oh. <laughs>